mention my book, The Current. Well, it's not number one. It's not white fragility, but it's the 21 biggest lies about Donald Trump and you. It is available from Amazon and at your local booksellers. And you may hear about it once or twice or seven or more times today as I guest host for Hugh. He is out of here for a while. Two days. He is uh, missing tomorrow, which is the 20th anniversary of this show and a, a, another anniversary of his marriage to his wife, the fetching Mrs. Hewitt. And we want to congratulate Hugh for that. And uh, tomorrow, hopefully, we can do some uh, something special to recognize that occasion. But I, what, what I think is even more amazing, uh, you know, he misses misses his 20th anniversary of the show. He also missed the day that two huge religious rights cases came out uh, yesterday. Justice Roberts finally came through. Some of us had our doubts. I know Hugh was like, he's not David Souter. He's not David Souter. And we're like, well, I don't know. I don't know. He seems a little Souterific lately. He's getting a little Soutery. Is this going to happen? Is this going to come through? It did come through. And there are two big cases. Uh, the first case had to do with the Little Sisters of the Poor. Yet again, these these wonderful women who go out and serve the least of us, the, the 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 people who are hurting, the people who are in need, and they and they devote their lives to it. And for some reason, the left is obsessed with forcing these ladies to violate their basic religious faith by providing contraceptive as part of their health care package, uh, which is which is contrary to their religious belief. This is a uh, a sincere religious belief. Now, it's not shared by everybody, but that's not really the point. It's not free exercise if you can't freely exercise it. And what what this decision did, now, the decision didn't go far enough in the eyes of some. Uh, uh, Alito and Thomas both said, hey, we, we could have really gone a little further with this. A lot of it was some uh, administrative stuff. Did you did you put these rules into effect correctly? And it kind of left the door maybe a little bit ajar about some future administration coming in and putting in different rules because the basic premise is wasn't, holy cow, this is a terrible infringement on these uh, ladies' religious rights. It's more of a technical question. Well, did they, uh, did they infringe on it correctly? Or actually, in this case, uh, uh, did they uh, put in a regulation that didn't infringe on it correctly? So that, that was one of the cases, a very important case. And I, I, I'm sure when Hugh gets back, he will do an in-depth discussion of it, perhaps with the smart guys, John Eastman, Erwin Cherimarinsky. Uh, now, I am a trial lawyer, as you guys may remember. I'm, I'm a number of things. Uh, senior columnist at Town Hall, retired United States Army colonel. Like I said, noted trial lawyer, author of The 21 Biggest Lies About Donald Trump and You, which you should go out and get because it's uh, hilarious and mean, just like me. Um. So I don't really want to talk to law professors. And, uh, you know, being a retired colonel, I kind of am kind of enjoying not talking to generals. But we're going to be talking to a general a little later. we got uh, uh, General David Deptula coming up. And uh, I've got some interesting questions to ask him from a different perspective. He likes to talk uh, uh, big theory. I want to talk leadership. So we got we got that coming up. Uh, there is a lot of other. Uh, uh, oh, oh. The second case. I almost missed the second. Our Lady of Guadalupe, which has to do with what's called the ministerial exception. That is, can a religious organization, in this case a school, uh, hire or fire people as it sees fit? Because there's a ministerial exception. If you are a minister, you don't have to you know, abide by the regular rules because you're a religious organization and that's infringement on your uh, religious liberty. What does a minister mean? Is it somebody who gets up on the pulpit and says, hallelujah? Not necessarily. It's anybody essentially who who, who has uh, uh, contact or, or uh, you know, with your students if you're a school or otherwise is a conduit for teaching the religious faith. And I, I think that's very important. What the heck does the government have any business coming in and telling a religion how to run and who who it can hire and who it can fire? It's just it's just crazy talk. And to go in and define who is and isn't a minister, you know, that's that's really infringing on the rights of these organizations and therefore on the rights of the congregation. 
So it, it, now it's going to be very liberally construed. So you don't have to literally be a minister. You can be a teacher. I bet you could be a custodian. And that's good. Why do the rest of us have any say over what someone's religion is? Now, now, again, now sometimes there are consequences that I wouldn't particularly like. Now, I'm, I, I was raised a Methodist. Um, I'm not even sure that the, as a Methodist that they even have Jesus. I know they have lots of guitars. Um, but uh, 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 I, I don't propose to go tell other people how to handle their religion. Sometimes, sometimes people have uh, ideas that I don't like. And conceivably, you could have people who uh, uh, practice what the rest of us would call bigotry. I think under this ruling, Our Lady of Guadalupe, I think it makes clear that we as a government, because we, you know, we, we are the government, we, you know, we're citizens, uh, have no right to go tell people how to practice their religion, even if, that, even if it's something alien to us, even if it's something we don't like, even if it's something we think is wrong. There's lots of people out there who think, yo, my religion's wrong. Now, I'm not a Methodist anymore. I, I, I left. I, I think I was essentially kicked out, but that's a whole different story. Um, but I, I, I think this is an important ruling. And I think, you know, it just goes to show that, that we're hanging by a thread for our religious liberty. Now, these were seven to two decisions. Um, Sotomayor, of course, dissent, uh, uh, Ginsburg dissent. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I can think that Breyer and Kagan could have gone their own way, could have gone against, given the chance. This is why it's so important to reelect President Trump. And we may have a, we may have a couple interesting guests, including Donald Trump Jr. today and uh, Ambassador Rick Grinnell. Uh, and, you know, I'm going to ask them about what they think is going to happen in November, because I know that's what you're wondering. What's going to happen in November? Are we going to get this senile, doddering old weirdo who lives in a basement as our president? Let me let's let's experience some of the magic that is Joe Biden right now. Um, let's guys, can we do cut number three? Uh, surplus military equipment for law enforcement. They don't need that. The last thing you need is an up-armored Humvee coming into a neighborhood. It's like the military invading. They don't know anybody. They become the enemy. They're supposed to be protecting these people. So my generic point is but that— do we agree that we can redirect some of the funding? Yes, uh, absolutely. Wait, wait, is he, wait, wait, is he being uh, interviewed by 3CPO? That's just weird. Well, the guy doing it was like an ALS guy, so... Oh, okay. All right. Okay, great. Yeah. All right, cool. I, I, finally, Joe Biden does something I like. He, he gives somebody a, a chance who might not otherwise have a chance. Okay, got to get props to Biden. Let's, uh, let's uh, uh, but not about the substance. Wait, wait, we're not going to give money to the police? Wait a minute. How about cut number five? Regularities that no one's spending the money on. If we can spend... $50 billion doing the things we're doing on other things from tax cuts to the military. We sure in hell can make that investment in looking for cures, getting the best scientists in the world engaged and focusing on those things. What? Hey, hey uh, producer Dwayne, do I'm we not have even some, sure that's English? Do, yeah, exactly. Do we have somebody who can translate his English into English? Holy cow. I have expect him to say, uh, you know, and 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 then once I'm uh, inaugurated, I will tie a an onion to my belt, which was the style of the day. Oh, there's more. There, oh, I, oh, there's there's plenty more, guys. We got a lot. We I got I got a whole thing. I'm showing it to you guys watching on the universe. I got this whole cut sheet. It's like um, the greatest hits of Joe Biden. Uh, wow. It's kind of like, you know, the equivalent of the greatest hits of Fog Hat. It's all slow ride and then a remix of slow ride that. Oh, my gosh. We got to play slow ride for Joe Biden. Guys, this is Kurt Schlichter. I'm guest hosting for the great Hugh Hewitt on anniversary.